Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl Crane Cake. Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Um, if you're not, welcome to the party. That's just the story of my life, like, every day. Anyway, cool. So let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They are misspelled sometimes, wrong word also get the stuff like that. God willing, in the future sometime. I will actually get to attending to them for my longer videos when I've been given an incentive to do so right now I don't have one because barely anybody watches me uh, and then next I'm very potentially wearing app makeup if I am you'll know if I'm not you'll also know keeps bouncing off my face so I'm not shape-shifting just in case you're concerned thirdly I have a segment I just want to really get it out of the way like real quick uh, wait I kind of pinch my cheek. not kind of I just do it I pinch my cheeks to display that I'm only human after all, I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all, don't take a jab at me, just don't do it, it's not nice. It's an empathy segment, I'm trying to display that I've got blood, if you prick me I bleed, stuff like that, yeah. When you roll over me with a steamroller I pass away, when you shoot me I might just find myself critical in the hospital, mm, um, yeah that's what I'm uh, gunning for, if it happened it happened, if it didn't tomorrow's another day, okay, yeah. Anyway cool beans and banana peels just don't be insensitive that's what i'm getting at oh my hair i know it looks a mess but guys i've got progress i've got traction today is saturday okay it's the 11th of may and it is still the 11th of may i have not popped over into the next day have i yeah um i tend to take a little bit of a breather on weekends but i don't have much of a breather now because i'm trying to redo my braids like i'm literally on a mission to just redo my hair uh not a mission i am actually in that mission and guys like yo it's it's, it's about the takedown it's about the product build up the detangling that's really just taking like a merry year uh so i just i feel like i'm gonna end up doing this over two weeks like it's ridiculous this is all that i've done it's something but it's for a week i've been at this for a week <laughs> A whole week but the bright side of it all is that my hair is growing y'all my locks are growing my locks are a fervent for god just like i'm fervent so that's what's good they are growing in grace from strength to strength that's my hair that's my hair from strength to strength yeah yeah it's growing it's getting bigger and better and it is just gonna keep going going and one of these days i'm gonna rock up and it's gonna be right on my bum i promise you and i'm gonna be feeling so proud so just wanted to show you that that that's what took up took up all of my saturday not all of it really but just uh, quite a large chunk of it and it's disquieting because it's like whoa am i gonna enter into a second week with this i d anyway it doesn't matter and so far as i get it done it's worth it because I, they chill on my head for three months so if it takes me two weeks to detail to bring down detangle and reinstall three months later i will only then be doing it again so it's worth it for the amount of time that i get to keep them on and it's also worth it for the hair growth the length retention all that jazz now that we've spoken about something irrelevant and boring let's get straight into the point Ugh. me and this yawnful activity guys it is alarming just how many new releases and new comebacks like they're not releases they're old but like they are being reinvited into streaming platforms type movies and series that are focusing on the whole end of the world and alien agenda i'm just like uh i don't know y'all i feel like something dire is up next for the planet whether or not the planet is intrigued by that prospect it's irrelevant because at this point there's too much evil with me making an observation of this like stuff right slap bang in the middle of all of my sorrow i'm just like i you know what okay fine let's go you know let's just go there's too much evil um but at the same time i'm not about that business i'm not about that focusing on nothing but the end of the world is here business so let's just move on but the wickedness is too exquisite okay it is exquisite it's ramping up ever so astronomically however i am also making an observation that a lot of people are calling it out for what it is so that might be grace gawking at you that might be a battle being waged where there's still enough good for god to keep this a going concern i mean none of us are good no one does good no not one for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god but the bible makes it clear that the last days is just riddled with this like crazy trend 
of people just walking away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. It is the great deception, the great apostasy. So there is a sharp decline, an exponential one at that, of uptake of Christianity, uptake of the only religion that saves. Let's just put that out there. Uptake of God at all. <laughs> uh, and if you're not going to take God up, <laughs> and if like the number of people on the earth that love him are just in dwindling measure, uh, found everywhere they're sparsely scattered scant in number this here can't continue if, if that's that's a, if that's the world as at any given moment that 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 guys qualifies as the very end of the end right but things have been kind of gangster for a minute to a point where christians all throughout you know have just been speculating that this is it it's over i mean you know how that dude wrote a book called 88 reasons Woo! whoa 88 reasons why the rapture is happening in 1988. <laughs> We're still here. And I was only four years old at that time. So would I have gone home? Would I have? Somebody please tell me what I have gone. I was quite a pious kid. I, I I liked God when I was a kid. I was yeah, I was prayerful. I was I was I was very serious. So yeah, I think I might have gone home, but that's the thing. Like does, does salvation really work like that? It doesn't. You get saved at a point in your life and then you go to heaven. But I do believe that turn, there is a, pl a point where they can't go to hell, like when they die, right? Yeah, like it's called the age of accountability or what. I do believe in that, but I don't think it's so, it's, it's free. I don't think it's, it's old. I, I think kids exit accountability much younger than a lot of people would appreciate. Yeah, I, I do believe that kids exit this age of accountability a lot earlier than a lot of people think because they get to a point where they now are aware of what they're doing and they still are disrespectful they're still disobedient they're still ridiculous like there's this theory that based on what happened in the wilderness with caleb and joshua and everybody how it is that god said kids from basically the age of 20 under can go into the world into the wilderness so into the new land flowing with milk and honey to go and take it but everybody else that's basically 21 up it's over for you type thing like stay in the wilderness you're not going into the land flowing with imagine being just 21 years old and you can't go into the future whoa yeah but anyway they were in rebellion like exquisite rebellion but a lot of, uh, there's some people there's a camp in the body of christ that believe that just based on that alone in the old testament that the age of accountability must be 20 that every child every human being that dies at uh, basically 20 down just automatically goes to heaven <laughs> sorry no that is not true it cannot be because have you seen some 18 year olds have you heard some of the things they say have you observed the things they do have you gone to high schools and perused the amount of fornication in there have you heard the foul language in the mouths of some 15 13 year olds have you observed the level of disrespect and disobedience to parents that children walk in if there are no ramifications for children based on commandments that god gave to children then there is no god and he says that he will leave no sin unpunished so seeing as children obey your parents is like a whole commandment that commandment can only apply to a child so depending on what you call a child in your country 21 and under 20 and under or 18 and under uh if you don't obey that you are outside of the will of god and if you unfortunately perish prior to you exiting your childhood some of them i do believe do go to hell uh but that's not what i'm here talking about anyway i don't even know how i got talking to the age of accountability oh yeah i was speaking about 88 reasons of why the rapture is happening in 1988 and how it is that i was four years old and wondering if at all if it, if that rapture had happened at that stage i would have gone and i believe i would have because i was within accountability i think i had yet to reach the age of accountability i think but i was also kind of pious i liked jesus i liked god i was i had god on my mind as a kid guys i really did i, I properly did because i started out in like catholic schools and stuff so i don't know whatever yeah. not even something that we're talking about today we are not having that discussion uh which is we're not having it okay because it's, it's a touchy subject although i've spoken about it <laughs> in my vlog a touchy or not <laughs> i have spoken about it you know um in my video in my videos um, about how it is that god gave me a vision a prophecy and dreams quite a few of them explaining to me what's gonna happen to children in the tribulation <laughs> yeah like so essentially they will be left behind kids my point exactly <laughs> 
my point exactly like yeah the left behind conglomerate of children i yeah the lord should, like i already spoke about this in my videos y'all like i don't want to reiterate on it go and watch my older content but i saw cannibalism i saw child armies that were feared feared by the world like they were gangs and these kids were upset because their parents were not were it, <laughs> It's like all the religion that they were taught by their parents who were out here hopping up and down like kangaroos in the world still here even though the apparent christians left is exactly what caused the rebellion of the kids like you didn't even go and you were so ungodly that i didn't go so why should i listen to you <laughs> and then they form armies that are cannibalistic and abusive and dangerous and violent and so recalcitrant against authority that they won't even take the mark of the beast and somehow they're gonna elude the whole system never mind the system but the plagues and the only thing that will make them repent once they are seven years older <laughs> is the second coming of jesus christ <laughs> the lord says suffer the little turn to come to me the bible says that if you cause a child to sin then it's better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and for you to be cast into the ocean than for you to i guess face god mm. on that like final day and that's what the lord showed me is going to be happening with some kids in the tribulation high schools gonna be like gang what do you call this like gang sites like recruitment gang joints little children tiny like young 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 kids young like so young that like that's why i'm like that's why i say that i believe the age of accountability is a lot younger than a lot of people think kid i like i saw like some kid that looked like he could have been six out here being used to lure adults to his aid to his aid do you understand only for once these adults were now like hi where are your parents little boy yeah this little boy then runs into a corner and out come some like teenage bandits looting robbing and in the worst case scenario killing and then eating the human being that's what i saw in a dream like some cannibalistic kids that are also going to rebel vehemently against their parents who will initially try to continue as normal with disciplining them johnny timmy let's go hey when i was gonna be like excuse me <laughs> <laughs> the restraint is going to be removed why am i laughing because of the fact that i've been trying to get to the youth <laughs> i've been trying to get to your kids <laughs> you know how there is this like advert it's not an ad i don't know what you want to call it it's i guess you can call it an ad because it's been placed as such but it's a social media vi um, a social media video that has gone incredibly viral of some gay guy doing a jingle very talented i'll give that to him but you know when you're using your talents for satan don't nothing matter well uh well sung like absolutely mellifluous gay gentleman out here doing a little jingle about how we're coming for your children and there's nothing you can do <laughs> and he's proud of this lgbt blah blah agenda yeah basically just trending on social media telling all of us that he's coming for our children because we are intolerant and blah blah all that jazz in a bag of chips mm, yeah alrighty cool yeah well they got to your kids <laughs> they got to your kids and they are the ones that you're punting the agenda of you're proliferating them more than you are proliferating christians and so when God was like i want your children <laughs> I want you our babies. Give me our children, eh? Give me the four and the five year olds. I'll take her. I'll take him more. I'll go and put him under my wing like a mother hen and I'll raise him up in the admonition of Jesus. Give me our babies. Give me our babies. <laughs> you look at me like I'm some creepy human trafficking rando into indoctrinating some kids. Mm. Give me your babies. Give me your children. That's what I said when I first got saved in Christ. <laughs> I was like, give me your babies. <laughs> I literally wrote poetry in my blog where I was like, Lord, I want the youth. I want the youth. I want the kids. I want to get them young. Do you want to know why I said I wanted to get them young? Because when I got born again at the age of 26 and a half, the first and biggest and baddest regret in the game that I had was having sex at all. That was the biggest and baddest regret I had. I wished I had gotten saved early enough to be a virgin waiting for her husband. Yeah. I the first and biggest and bad and there was no way under heaven 
that I would have maintained my virginity on nothing but willpower. It, not in this society. Not in this secular gangstrosity of a society. So when I got saved, I severely regretted it. And I realized that the only thing that would have protected me from making the foul errors that I made <laughs> with sexual immorality was if I got raised up in the admonition of the Lord. If I grew up among youth groups, children attending camps, out here being spoken to by youth pastors about the dangers of fornication. You know why? Because listen up, right? When somebody finally spoke to me about soul ties for the first time when I was 26, it landed on my heart like such a gong. It was, it was actually quite ridiculous how it landed. I got such severe conviction. I was told this stuff in a club, music going... <laughs> The person telling it to me of which, of course, was also not very serious with Jesus yet. Nonetheless, I got that little bit of a nit bit of the gospel from at nightclub. And that conversation in the middle of all that noise and music, when this person was explaining this thing to me in the club, like I've already explained the story to you guys before. I'm not going to labor on the details of why we even ended up talking about sex before marriage in a club and why we shouldn't do it. It was like, not it wasn't entirely a club, but it was one of those very vibrant music, loud hangout joints like it, it was like five six the kind of place that you go to before you go to the club like a bar type yeah it was a place of that nature mm. and this music was going and going and this chick got me so focused like concentrating with like wires in my eyes like with with hypnosis spirals in my eyes like i was under some kind of a mesmerizing spell the way that i <laughs> was so enchanted and entranced by what this person was saying I came later to learn that that was not enchanting or entrancement, nothing esoteric or new agey, but spiritual. It was the Holy Spirit convicting me of sin. And I sat there listening to this chick and I wanted to get more answers, more information on this thing that she was telling me was the problem of my soul. And uh, she just did not give me satisfactory answers. And so I went into a, a, my own self, deep dive, own research. Until hallelujah, amen, many months later, I got totally born again. Yo, you're gonna have to check out all of my stories to get all the nitbits of what made me born again. Anyway, yeah. So, I, if I got that severely convicted right in that kind of environment of sexual sin, when somebody finally just explained the consequences of it to me, it means that if somebody had spoken that same message to me at 15, at 14, if I broke my virginity at 17, if somebody had spoken to me at 16, before I did it, I would not have done it. I'm just like, I proper would not have done it. I mean, the conviction I got at 26 made me stop having sex with my boyfriend. <laughs> I stopped. I, I thoroughly stopped. Like, we were seasonally broken up when I heard that information. And by the time we got back together again, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, mm. I can't, you know? Dude was like, but like, we've been doing it all along. And it's like, mm -mm. yeah, but you know, God doesn't like it. And he was just like, whoa, okay, Kahabo, like, whatever. Sister girl, do you sister cheeky uh, type thing? He didn't really give me grief or whatever. But the thing that also broke us up, uh, that I believe God basically created a wedge between us was because I, after a couple of like weeks of giving, not, I didn't give him grief. It's not like he, he hated. It's not like he was resisting me for that decision I made. He wasn't coercive at all. I'd be lying. Okay. Uh, and neither was he upset. Like he was a total gentleman about it actually. Yeah. I, I, I capitulated one time. And after that, everything fell apart. Like literally, if our relationship was on rocks, this time around it was in the ocean. Oh, I was drowning. There was so much turbulence that came that ripped us apart permanently. So I was celibate in my relationship for a couple of weeks, maybe even like two to three months with my boyfriend. And when I finally capitulated again, because I imagined that, ah, no, God is probably cool with it. Eh, thunderstorms, thunderstorms, peals of thunder. So uh, the, those, those rumblings, those thunderstorms uh, and that conviction that caused a woman that had been fornicating all this time to stop having sex with her boyfriend. If that had happened earlier, I would not have had sex at all. I would not have had sex at all. So long story short, if somebody had gotten to me first, if somebody had been like, I want your children, give me your baby, give me your child, where's your teenage girl? Eh, give me that 13 year old. I want to go talk to her about Jesus. I want to go and explain to her consequences of sexual sin. Give me your baby. If my mom had been like, take her. <laughs> I wouldn't have been taken like a tsunami. But that's what the LGBT community is like. I want your baby. Give me your baby. I want to say, give me your child. So I, we get to say that. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> if I had gotten saved, 
as a kid I would never have had sex I would never have had sex and I know that that's true because of how strongly I reacted to information about sexual refer re repercussions sexual spiritual repercussions when i was 26 like yeah i just i know that i know that i know that if somebody had responsibly explained the gospel to me when i was younger if somebody had been like me you know how i am so explainy you know how i tell my stories you know how i like my whole mission is centered around using my testimony my life the thing that I, the things i've experienced to create a great disincentive in people from entering into certain things. I feel very strongly like I cannot do anything for millennials and Gen X's and certain Gen Z's. I feel like I can only help Gen Z's and Gen Alpha because a lot of millennials, basically all the kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they've already made so many mistakes that they get bitter when I speak. I, I my, my heart even plunges into the ocean. When I look at my stats on YouTube, and I noticed that the age group that I am largely attracting as subscribers, no hate, are my age. It's like, you know, I'm looking for the age group 18 to 25, 24. I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for them. I'm also gunning for 18 and under. I'm gunning for kids. I'm gunning for people who are still large. They're still single. Fine, they're making mistakes right now. But just like me at 26, not enough to basically have had so much of a mess in your life. That now you would be jealous of everybody that has not made that mess. Now you would be bitter at everybody that has not spilled that milk on the kitchen counter and is not crying over it. I am, I, I wanted, guys, I got saved at that pivotal time. It, it was a sweet spot. I got born again at a sweet spot. I got saved when I was about to make life-changing mistakes. But I was caught on time. But not on time enough to not have made certain mistakes. I made the kinds of mistakes that give you a scar on your leg it's unseemly when you're wearing certain outfits you're like oh i wish i didn't have that there but like it's not as unseemly as a scar on your face like i made scar and leg type mistakes and i'm dealing with people groups that have made scar and face type mistakes and now they don't like how they look in the mirror they can't just cover it with some pants and they're coming at me like a ton of bricks i last night i had Whew, Jesus Christ, give me mercy. You know, guys, I'm exhausted. I like I want to have babies, but let the rapture happen because it appears you you don't care that we you you imagine that we are the destructive ones for the baby. Eh? You think that we are the one that go destroy the baby, but the baby is perfectly handled by the body of Christ. So we are better for your baby. We are better because otherwise the LGBT go grab your baby, will go sing jingle on TikTok. And trends and the baby gonna go agree clap hands not understanding what is going on with them when it is possible for them to go to hell I want your babies it's possible for them to go to hell I don't understand what's going on with my phone should I switch it off and on there's like a whole glitchy thing going on here that um, is making me somewhat uneasy is it because they're still content deleting one second let me check something no it did that yesterday as well like it is is this phone glitching and twitching on me like for what <laughs> Anyway, whatever, look, um, God is amazing. Let's just carry on talking. I had a horrendous nightmare last night. Basically just a lot of sorcery that is operating coming from a lot of people. A lot of people. The majority of my afflictors are my age group. They are women who are my age and men that are my peers. Men that would have been age appropriate to be my husband and women who would have been age appropriate to be my girls. So give or take, I'm 39. It, women from anywhere around the age of like 30 to 45 are just coming at me. Maybe 30 is a bit young. Let's, let's say 34, 33, 33 to 45. Y'all, hey, but like, okay, so let me, let me describe my dream to you. When I say I want you are children, so you can understand what I'm talking about. When I was newly saved, I wrote so much poetry and I prayed so hard to God to give me the youth because I was young enough to be a uh, role model towards them. Like, you know how young girls so look up to a beautiful young professional woman and they're like, oh, I want to be like a rabo. Like when I was younger, I used to absolutely love Girlfriends, that show and uh, Sex and the City. I used to like Ellie McBeal. It was basically, they were all shows showing young women in the early stages of their careers in whatever fields doing really well and you looked up to them of course there was a lot of sin in those shows i did not yet know christ so it didn't really matter to me that there was so much 
sin in so very many regards and it, what was true was that I looked up to these women and I wanted to be like them I wanted to be like Ellie McBeal I wanted to be like Ling like Portia de Rossi uh okay so Callista Flockhart Lucy Liu Portia de Rossi I wanted to be like Joan in in Girlfriends Tracy Ellis Ross I wanted you get my point I wanted to be like Carrie Bradshaw Sarah Jessica Parker I wanted to be like these women when I was older um they were not they were young but older than me so i was at that pivotal age where i was young but older than high school girls and i wanted them to look up to me the way that i looked up to those women and i imagined that i was at like i, like I said i was at that age and so able to influence in that regard I, I felt like my example could be a good one but for good um instead of wickedness like sarah jessica parker was not a good influence in God. Neither was Lucy Liu in Ellie McBeal. She was this feisty, animalistic girl. With, like, ah, I remember how she was. And neither was, um, who do you, who is this? Like, um, uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. They were ad admirable from a worldly vantage point. And I now got born again as a woman that was now living the lifestyle that I admired in those women. I had the career and everything. I got, I basically f fulfilled the dreams. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got that, but I got born again. So I imagine that I would make for a really, really great example to young women, young girls, and like young women that are just starting out in like their adult life. I imagine that I would, I would make for a really great example because I am the Sarah Jessica Parker <laughs> that is saved, that doesn't fornicate. You know, I am the Joan that is saved. I am the Ellie McBeal that is saved. I, I, yeah, I am the well-rounded woman with much to look forward to and up to that is, however, on the straight and narrow. I thought of myself as that potential. I really did. And so I took it to God and I sought his face for a husband. The two of us would then be like this team that would work with the youth. I wanted that. Well, I'm still single at 39. I also wanted, um, what is this? In and of myself, I wanted to, to, to really, really inspire young women, young girls type thing for Christ. I, I, I you know, WordPress got rid, it got either archived or got rid of. If, if I had money, I would actually like raise a lawsuit, not a lawsuit, but take it to court. There's a lot of my content that I wrote from, I started my blog in 2012 and content up to 2015. It's gone, all of it. It's like they just decided to archive it without my permission. And it's really upsetting because it's like creative work. I wrote a lot of poetry when I was still employed at MTN for Christ. And a lot of the, one of the poetry, one of the poems was called Father, I Have a Dream. And it was a dream about reaching the youth for, for Jesus with my husband. And like it's gone, like it's all gone. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure WordPress would be able to re, like just regurgitate it if I said I wanted back, but you know. It just did a cleanup on my behalf that I can't do anything about and I'm broke, too broke to raise the issue. Anyway, whatever, yeah, I had those dreams, right? I had those dreams, I, I sent those petitions to God and it was my peers. It was my peers, it was the, you know, late Gen X, uh, early millennials that pulled the rug from underneath my feet and prevented me from getting to the youth many of us didn't even have children yet at the time so really i wasn't even gunning for their kids i was gunning for the kids of the gen x's the older gen x's i was gunning for gen z's i was gunning for kids the age of my little sister she i'm older than her by 17 years i was gunning for kids in primary high school varsity and just the beginning of corporate i was gunning for that and i was well placed to gun for them and i had the rug pulled from under my feet by women who were 25 going all the way to the age of 40. They made a decision. Men and women, men and women, not just women, okay? It was men and women that made a decision that they're just gonna be dirty. That they're just gonna be filthy. They're gonna play dirty. Women are going to jealously rip me from all of my dreams. And men are going to, in their entitled demeanor, just get what they want, just grab it. Here's a Christian woman consecrated and she's getting slapped by stupid boys with Corovela. Like, Pegamina Pella, bring back lost lover, ex-boyfriend trying to come back into the life of a woman that gave her life to Christ and you didn't want him. You didn't want Jesus, dude. And so I left. I got out. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've got like this bring back lost lover flood from exes. I've got this random stupid boys in the office. 
out here deciding that I like Karawo, she's cute, that chick there chilling in that department, boo, with like some strange spells and all that stuff wreaked so much spiritual chaos that it caused God to essentially extract me from society at all. I was working for God, my blog was available, right, for anyone to find me because the search engine results were actually, uh, uh, my, my SEO stats were actually really good when it came to searching my name. If you would type in Karawo Tlawani, you would find I was like number one or two on the search results in from any like you know search engine that you would like search from whether you're on bing whether you're on google whether you yeah you would find my blog because i ranked very high if you were to type in my name and my surname so you know how when people are competing with you or when they're curious about who you are or what you're about and they like they know your name and your surname hovering around in the office curious about you hovering around on campus in school because i used to study part-time at vids curious about you are aware of your first name and surname sometimes they just look you up and they did and they found my blog they found my blog it ranked one of the it was number one or two in the search results clicked on it and then discovered my fervency for jesus discovered my love for god discovered the work that i was doing i was writing this beautiful poetry this literature for the lord and all that jazz and it was these 25 to 40 year old women my peers at the time right i was 26 <laughs> that decided that over my dead body for real they decided over their dead bodies for real for real girl like over your dead body dude for real <laughs> my name was searchable my blog is what came up i like to say this okay so the proverbs 31 woman it is written of her in the lord's word that many women have done excellently but she surpasses them all there is this strange animalistic um desire it's it's almost like it's it's wild it's it's beastly it's rooted in primitive thought processes that are not laundered by self-control that dwells in men sometimes where it is that they just have this stupid selfish mentality along the lines of men cannot hold their horses or be good and run rampant sorry and and, and run around in these streets being like the good boy because no woman likes the good guy however women have got to be good otherwise no one is going to embrace her or take her seriously right the, it's, it's a primitive mindset it's very animalistic because a lot of times that's how, gen, generally how animals operate in that the males can have multiple partners and just continue to like have like breed babies with multiple females without them complaining that's just how the animal kingdom works a lot of times do you understand what i'm saying uh whereas female animals tend to be just like us uh, loyal to one male tend to give birth to the babies of one dude all throughout their lives largely that's what happens in the animal kingdom there are exceptions of course to every norm right mm. So this primitive mindset dwells in men where they desire loyalty and faithfulness and goodness and virtue in, in a woman but don't feel the need to chisel their own, to actually build their own character. Therefore, there is a, a, an excruciating entitlement that they have over good girls when they meet them. I don't know how many male friends I have had in the past as well as friends of my boyfriend that I have made an observation of in the past that had some pretty sober, stable women. But the horror stories that I would hear about what they're doing in these streets were just like heightened, astronomical. And I couldn't understand, but why is this woman staying? And I feel as if though largely it's because I guess women feed that beast and it therefore continues to thrive. And never mind feeding the beast, it's a carnal worldly mindset that is not laundered by Jesus. It's, it's not laundered by the Lord so because the man has no holy spirit there is no incentive for him to overcome the basic instincts that he has this slave nature that we are born with right dead in trespasses and since it's an actual original sin problem where it is that men will have a, a natural inclination towards a certain bestial this way of being in the presence of women while women will grovel at the feet of men proper it's like the judgment that was handed down to eve and adam adam and eve when they fell in the garden if you think about what God said to Adam, he said that, Adam, you're going to go, uh, sorry, he said to Adam, you are going to rule your wife. It, that was pronounced as a judgment. It was a curse on him. Yes, work by the sweat of your brow, all that jazz, and rule your wife. The woman was told she's going to give birth in pain and that her desire will be for her husband. So basically, she's going to be salivating after this dude, chasing after him like a tail while he is authoritarian, full of rule. 
and sometimes even maybe withholding affection affection from her to a point where men have got to be instructed to love their wives the way that christ loved the church when they come to the lord when they embrace the second adam they have to be given an explicit instruction to do so so because it doesn't come naturally in them they they easily hurt us in ways that are excruciating that they however have no appreciation for the excruciating pain that that is causing they men rarely ever in the world have any true appreciation for the exquisite pain they cause women when they cheat they they don't have a true grasp or a true remorse for it like a true pain for the pain that they cause another like you know how when you like if you hurt somebody else if you shove someone if you push them or if you do something mean or if you like you do coarse jesting if you just mock somebody tease them and then you see them walking away crying how it makes you feel like trash like you really feel guilty when, when you set a person up for failure when you sabotage them and then you realize what you've done and it just eats you alive they struggle to experience that kind of guilt for afflicting women with an exquisite pain when they cheat it, it like it just doesn't dawn on them naturally that the pain is excruciating when you cheat they, they they to a point where they want if it's if it's happened once and the woman forgives and he comes back in he just decides next time to be more careful with getting caught instead of avoid it at all it, it, it's it doesn't dawn on them as so a grand a, a, a infraction against her that it's worthy of not repeating again like to see a woman like that so devastated it's not enough for him to stay his hand from doing that again there is just a cognitive like a, a dissonance of sorts a, a divorcement from rightful reaction appropriate reaction to a woman's pain that dwells naturally in men that are yet to be redeemed by the holy spirit of god to a point where it is imperative that the lord would then highlight it in the scriptures through paul that is a paul or titus uh king well basically the word of the lord okay even in the book of ephesians that you have got to love your wives the way that christ loved the church god says it like over and over and over again love your wives love your wives love your wives because it does not come naturally it, it does not come easily love is not the equivalent or tantamount of emotions felt once because yes indeed those feelings those butterflies that stuff that you feel when you're romantically involved with somebody that of course dwells in men they also spaz they also go get have the hots for a woman to a point where they can't control themselves they don't know whether they're coming or going they can't help but you know just basically make like who was that dude jumping up and down on oprah's couch when he was with his woman T tom cruise right over what, what's the lady's name i forgot but now they're divorced and what have you yeah guys can when they're in love with the woman do crazy things like those but love according to the scriptures we all know but, uh, but uh, according to god's word in first corinthians 13 is not merely feelings that can make a man jump and uh, jump up and down on oprah's couch or wait with better breath for an sms to come through a text message or, or whatsapp it is not just that love is a whole deed do you understand it's patient it's kind it's it doesn't hold a record of past wrongs it's not self-serving it's not conceited it's go read first corinthians 13 you get my point it always trusts it always um it bears all things it endures yeah yeah you get my point you understand right uh, of course i would need to go and memorize first corinthians 13 which is quite a sham really why does that i don't know it off by heart because there are certain passages of scripture that i made a determination to memorize early in the faith and that was one of them and i didn't quite get around to doing it but i, I don't know it off by heart but you can go and read it yourselves all right that's what love is love is the embodiment of first corinthians 13 and everything else that god says love is by this men will know that you're my disciples love one another um you give my point mm. and they they it, it doesn't come naturally the training does not come naturally uh to them and there also appears to be very little incentive among each other to counsel one another to do better by women like men in the world help each other hurt women it's just the most ridiculous thing and it's bizarre and barbaric to watch um whereas men in christ have got to be retrained they have they get retaught and so coming to christ was for me i guess the best thing that could have ever happened to me because then somebody else got, has a takes on the responsibility of letting a guy know that you don't just get to hurt a woman like that other men and they tend to more easily listen to other men than they do other women and in the christian faith it is frowned upon to just be unloving towards a wife by men in the faith as well it's not just a woman highlighting that but jabu you're breaking my heart but jabu why did you cheat on me but tamba why did you that you know it's always us that are whining and complaining but when a man 
is out here telling a man that you don't do that to a woman. It, it hits differently, right? They train each other far better than we ever can train them. They're not inclined naturally to listen to us. They have got to actually work on it to listen to us. It's even written again in God's word that men, if you don't listen to your wives, your prayers will be hindered because it's just a natural rather gravitation that draws on their bones to not listen so they have to be intentional in beating their flesh to submission putting to death the deeds of the body by the holy spirit to conquer or overwhelm that which is their natural drawing whatever they are naturally drawn towards doing they have to go to Romans 7 war and make war with this body of death in making a self-observation, self-awareness to see that I'm being mean. I am being um, hard. Like, what is this? Um, the condescending. I'm being, um, you know, when you just like disregard a person, quickly just rebuff them and whatnot. You, when you're filled by the Holy Spirit, stuff like that you look out for naturally. And then with women, you know how the judgment on Eve was your desire will be for your husband well i mean that can produce a myriad of all different kinds of issues in that there's a, a um, gargantuan problem with women who, where it is that they just for the sake of gaining affection at all from a man will literally take anything they are doormats my goodness steam rollers on the floor flat just laying yourself prostrate on the floor to a most dastardly man like that's why you have these odd pairings in society of some of the baddest chicks in the game with these dudes that cause everybody question marks like how did this woman marry that guy or a woman walking down the aisle to a man that has shown her flames shown her flames women embracing proposals of men that you've been dating the guy since you were in high school and the whole time all of this johannesburg has been sleeping with this man and all the reports of all of his dalliances have been coming back to your ears then he proposes marriage and she marries him she marries him there was a woman like that at mtn that married no she was not at mtn she was the wife of a man that was working for mtn this guy oh goodness like i had a friend um from in the group hosting program that i was doing for the 2010 world cup and this chick i had newly met her uh she used to work in this man's department prior to her moving to marketing and my goodness she would tell me stories about how she she was a very a popular woman like she knew a lot of people she was popular with everybody boys girls men women etc and she knew quite a few call center agents at mtn and she was she would tell me all of these stories about how it is that oh my friend she's busy with let's say that guy's name was was john hey my friend is dating john and she's in love with him and i'd always known john you see john was a general manager for procurement and john had when i was new at mtn just maybe two years prior had made a pass well i mean no it was just a year prior because the world cup was in 2010 i started working at mtn in 2009 this man i was an administrator my boss had sent me to get um documentation signed off or something at his desk i went there on some okay i'm going to send documentation to a gm and then i get to the desk i find him at the desk thankfully he was there for the day and so i decided to go straight to him instead of to his pa on some do you mind signing this is quite urgent it's this particular documentation from my boss who is this woman and this dude was like um yeah sure i'll sign it if you agree to go to dinner with me i just looked at this dude and i was like <laughs> and i left it right there on his desk the next time i asked my colleague to go rather every time that we, he needed the, that documentation needed to be sent to this dude i sent my my male colleague because i did not appreciate all of that flirtation i did not know at that stage that he was married but i just found like just his like ugh. i found his activity inappropriate like severely i would only come to learn that that's just how he was how he was and so much so would this guy just hit on anything in the room he sometimes forgot that he once asked you out he once made a pass at you like he he would <laughs> he has he made so many passes at me thinking that i was just a, a, another like again like he didn't know that it was the same girl from last year it was the same girl from two months ago it, to him it was just a skirt that was passing he had made a pass at me in what is what is this thing um in the parking lot where it is that i was going to go to my car and he was driving out and he decided to slow down and talk to me and yes one time i was like dude no i'm not gonna be with a casanova he had no clue that i was the girl that he said he wants to take to dinner no clue that i was the girl that he would he had like just inappropriate conversation on email like you would talk to him right and then next thing he would send you an email talking about how it is that your smile is so beautiful and i'm like why is this guy doing this and well largely i just ignored it 
I wasn't the only one. I was not the only one. This guy did this with the whole of MTN. That 14th Avenue building was just littered with his victims. And some of them had the brazen audacity to fall in love with him. And this friend that I met at the group hosting program thing, I met her in 2010 after this dude had made a couple of passes on, on, on me and he would continue to make them all the way up until I left MTN. I didn't leave MTN, I got fired, right? Y'all know my story is a sad one, right? Mm. Anyway, and the whole time he never knew that I was the same girl. He just thought it was a different one because he was just always all about that business. Yeah, this chick who I met a little bit later then told me that one of her girls from the call center is in love with him and she's busy crying and she kept on telling her, but he's a married man and you've known it this whole time. He's a married man and you've known it this whole time. By then, I also knew that he was a married man. So I was very annoyed by the fact that he tried to ask me out for dinner and he was busy with a few of the women in the call center, a few of them. So basically it was like, if you will let me, I'll let you. If you will let me, I will wine and dine you and I will take you to hotels. And some of these girls, these, these impressionable girls, these women agreed to basically be wooed by a man that they allowed themselves to fall in love with despite knowledge of his dalliances all over the company and the fact that he was married. He was the uh, cousin of one of my colleagues, right? Uh, one of the project managers and this girl would tell me about his wife i would ask her what does his wife look like is she that means is she ugly like is there is she fat is she is there something unseemly about her did she trap him with a pregnancy what and um, her cousin what um, her, his cousin her the chick that was my colleague was like if you saw the wife she is so beautiful and she is so sweet and she is so calm and she's so relaxed she's basically just this like chill lady that the, the kind of man that the not kind of man but the kind of woman that every man wants like you know not a loud mouth just kept to herself very virtuous just yeah and beautiful i was like yeah of course like i i, I know i had a boss when i was a student at Vids when I worked in in court in in in, ca in retail as a as a casual who had the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen for a wife and the most beautiful kids I'd ever seen in my life and this dude was busy with all of these chicks in Rosebank that worked at YDE at Stone Cherry at what have you and the only reason he did not hit on me and my colleagues was because we were his staff. That was the only reason. But listen to this, okay? That same man, years down the line, one of my friends who was a who was with me, a casual at the same time. Yeah, we made we stayed friends. Having met at that place, she went on right ahead to graduate in fashion design. All right. So the guy ran a clothing store. He would later meet her and offer her a proposal, a business proposal, to work for him as a designer in his store. Cool. You know, the, the young woman has grown up and she's graduated from her fashion degree. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. And then while he was at it, he just slipped in a, uh, like, how, how would you like to go for dinner? How would you? And she was like, I can't believe Wang Shell. I can't believe he's asking me out. And, and I was like, but girl, you know that that's how he was, right? You remember how back in the day his beautiful wife would come to the store and we'd feel sorry for her type setup thing and then some like strange little flagrant mistress of his would pop into the store looking for him flirting with him right in front of us and this dude was just like literally ironing the skirts of all of these casuals all over Rosebank, the zone and the mall etc. That's just the thing. This woman was with this man from what i understood since they were kids right he was a man that the woman was in her 30s he was maybe late 30s entering his 40s my friend and i were like 19 right he also tried to highlight my cousin who was my age exactly at 19 yeah uh when she came to the store he was like who's your cousin i'm like do you the, all i could think about was do you seriously think i'm gonna let my cousin date you knowing that you're a married man i'm not gonna throw my cousin in the bus dude like he was just he had no horses like at all and given that this woman was with this man since high school and now they were married, what are the odds that she did not know that her man was like that? Like, what are the odds that you could be in the dark about that level of philandering activity? Uh, a man so prolific with other women, you tend to know. You tend to know when your man is like that. You find out a lot of times. You get told people who care about you. And um, uh, what is this? Never mind people who care about you, but sometimes just bust him. Like just activity for days. Like cell phone. I had a boyfriend that was hectic like that. And within the first two, three months of us being together, I just like information arrived at my doorstep about stuff he was doing from my cousins. My cousin told me. I saw it in his cell phone. I still stayed with him like a year and a half. I dated that guy a, a year and a half. 
I'm explaining something here. Yeah, but I knew. I knew one time, one time, like this dude cheated on me with my <laughs> my cousin and our like we had, we were a crew of friends and he cheated he he decided it's like they his boys were with their girlfriends who were my cousin and our friends and I was the only medi that was not there and this dude bombard he 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 ish, this terminology english um he had a side piece thank you he had a side piece in front of my cousin and two of my girls in front of my cousin and two of my girls and of course i mean they, they told me they came back and they told me and the next weekend i was with him the next weekend i was with this guy i remember when my cousin told me the story all i could think i i, I was like was she beautiful and my cousin was like why toha she was like are you scared of yourself are you are you are you are you self self doubting don't doubt yourself the fact that my cousin didn't advise me to leave him that was problematic she was rather like don't self doubt you're the boss lady you're the rechte you're the queen you're the medi you're the one that he's always going to come back to girl so don't give yourself a headache over some side piece some floozy that was the advice from another woman the advice was not leave get out get the step in it was you are the number one <laughs> you're the rechte you're the medical aid girl and so because i was a medical aid <laughs> we call them medis yeah because i was the main chick um I, I i got comforted i thoroughly got comforted by that rubbish i got comforted by my status as the main chick instead of getting out that's what that judgment on eve achieves in a woman it is a woman from now on your desire will be for your husband it has created sappy little namby pamby females out of women who cannot make a resolved decision to leave a bad situation because all they want is love dun, da, 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 da. all they need is love dun, da, 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 da. and so far as the man is happy to say i love you and so far as he's basically he's made you a rechte, a rechte. we call them rechte. that's the afrikaans word for right so you are the main chick main chick yeah and so far as you're a rechte, you, you're just good you, yeah well, that was the last relationship where I ever took that in my stride because it hurt too much. The next time, in next times that I would date, I would demand uh, faithfulness. So uh, I guess my boyfriends were a lot more discreet with, with their um, dalliances and what have you. But just the fact that women can know the risk for contracting all different kinds of venereal diseases that they put themselves in by staying with such unfaithful men and yet stick around, having even been a virgin when you initially lay with this guy and then you end up contracting a disease just the fact that those are total entire realities possibilities that could come through and yet nonetheless they still bend over backwards is evidence of the curse not only that in the black community in particular i can't speak for white girls because i never really had a lot of them for friends or any other race for that matter right I, I largely hung around black girls on the come up and one thing i can tell you about black women black men their complaints sometimes complaints about us are unfounded and unsubstantiated uh, yes black girls can be loud and they are sometimes full of screaming and yelling but one thing that they are is submissive and full of service they are very domesticated extremely domesticated like <laughs> i don't know how many of my friends i have starved at the houses of having visited them because they didn't make me a sandwich on time that we're out here now that the boyfriend was over or that she was at the boyfriend's house was cooking bop and meat and she was like a chick that you will thoroughly walk into the house and stumble over some shoes at the door and yet at her boyfriend's house <laughs> black women <laughs> she'll be wearing a dirk and some knee pads because she's grubbing she's cleaning some pots like she is not even his wife like black women serve men like their wives and they are super domesticated in so doing and when they start dating these guys they will cook meals that you have never tasted as a friend and they will also clean a house in a way that girl but i know your bedroom and your mama house we are always stumbling over some shoes but this guy's house when you're there ding, everything is like sparkling she becomes a domestic maid and then when she progresses deeper into this relationship to a point of knowing his family when the family has gatherings events she's peeling some carrots she's cutting some potatoes she is 
waking up in the wee hours of the morning sweeping the yard otherwise known as Kufira Lebala and I'm like but you're not even his wife girl you're not even like proper they godisa almost like engage themselves bride themselves to men before they even married to them that's evidence of the curse I can't speak for white girls I don't know if white girls are like this too where it is that your own bedroom has got panties hanging on a chandelier the way that you did not put them in the laundry after you went into the shower you just threw it and then it landed on the chandelier and it's still there three days later but in your boyfriend's house oh my goodness like his his underwear will be folded with you know that stuff that folds shirts at the laundromat <laughs> you will fold his underwear like that <laughs> with a folding thing <laughs> and you will find it stacked on top of each other thinking this year is the right woman color coding his socks and everything making sure that there is nothing that is out of place because you want him to think that he's the baddest that you're the baddest chick in the game i don't know if white girls are like this too or non-blacks essentially any other race but i can tell you for a fact that with, with us black women and that like that's just the thing like they become like that and then there's the thing with the voices as well the voices of black women like this chick will be talking to you like this like a black girl right um yo girl yeah no my bunny has next thing like you don't even have to understand what i'm saying just listen to the tone and the, the you know the inflections in my voice the way that i'm speaking that's how she's talking hey and then next thing a phone call comes to you don't have to hear what i said just listen to the tone okay yeah <laughs> then a, a call comes through from her boyfriend same girl that was like yeah hey, oh so then you like a girl Maralena ke fila gore drobile bolo last week ke mone mone di la santsa le busy le mo mo so bara go shapa ka zetre that's her and then next thing a phone call comes to Ellen's boyfriend hi baby how are you like she goes from eh o mo dese ya tring tring hi babe <laughs> no i'm just hanging out with my girls yeah we just decided to do a few things you know we were at the mall uh yeah because one of my girls is graduating so we just like are seeing her through you know helping her shop anyway how are you you will literally stand there as her friend and you'll be like you will stand there and you will be out of your mind and the fact that your friend has a new tone she has a new voice it it has a squeak in it I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. I'm wrapped in plastic. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair. She will speak like that. <laughs> but with you, eh, get on my desk. How come man I'm not talking on the mobile car? I drive a car that drives a Honda or a Nana, a Nai or a Nana. That drives a thing. Oh, I'm void. Hey, babe. No, I'm good. I'm just hanging out with my girls. Yeah. No, we're at Panerotti's, the pizza place. Yeah. So what are you doing? <laughs> oh, babe. 